Peace be to you, dear friends. This video is coming out uh, on Christmas Eve day, and so I can greet you with Christmas greetings to let you know that all the monks at Mount Angel are thinking of you during this Christmas time and praying for you. Really praying for the whole world. Uh, here we are still in the grip of this pandemic, and we're very mindful of of you and and your needs and we pray for your protection and the, the health of all of you. Um, I know that some of you are able to go to church on Christmas Day but many others of you are not. Either way I want to encourage you all to be praying um, and especially if you can't go to church you know to pick up the Bible and pray to use as I've suggested before a missal to look at the, the, the text that the church prays and the, and the scripture readings that are there in front of us. And I thought, just as a sort of Christmas meditation for you today, to comment on perhaps what is the most familiar of all the texts in the Gospel. Uh, we would hear it at midnight Mass, or sometimes it's read in the Mass during the day. But it's, it's, it's the beautiful story uh, that Luke tells us. And I, I, I know you know the story. You, you know, this is the way it works with the Bible. You don't go, oh, I've heard it before. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> Every time we hear it, of course, it, it's a blessing for us. And I hope this year it will be a blessing for us uh, once again. Um, so this is the beginning of chapter 2. I'm going to sort of comment uh, as we go along because it, maybe there's some things in the text that, uh, that we can hear more deeply. Um, it begins like this. It's a solemn beginning. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole world. This first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to register, each to his own town. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to David's town of Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. Okay, those, those are probably familiar lines for us, but let me, let me say a few things about this. It, you know, it, here we are presented with Caesar Augustus, the, the ruler of the world, Caesar Augustus, his name, Augustus, is, is, it means he's worthy of worship. And he's running the world. He's got a decree uh, for a census that has the whole world moving. Caesar Augustus, at the time that Jesus was born, was considered, the emp he considered himself, the emperor of peace. It was he who gave peace to the world. And, and this decree that goes out from the emperor you know that in the ancient world, uh, decrees were called good news. Just because it was from the emperor. If the emperor said it, it was good news. It probably wasn't good news, but they called anything the emperor decreed good news. So anyway, that's worth knowing because this is going to come up later in the story. Um, Caesar thinks he's running the world, but in fact a higher providence is at work because Caesar's orders are getting Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem where according to prophecies the Messiah is to be born. And then we read this. While they were there, the days of her confinement were completed. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the place where travelers lodged. This scene is, we could say, is so quiet com compared to the, um, to the commotion that the emperor's decree has got the whole world moving around and over here, just quietly, in a place even outside the town of Bethlehem, the greatest thing that can have ever happened has just very quietly happened. And that, that, that quietness of it is, is striking. Um, 
Then here's what follows next. There were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping watch by night over their flocks. The angel of the Lord appeared to them as the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very much afraid. Notice this is somewhere else. This isn't where the child is. It's still very quiet and silent where the child is. But over here are shepherds, and you know, we, we sort of romanticize shepherds like, oh, aren't the shepherds sweet? You know, these were like kind of the bottom level of society. So this angelic appearance is given to people that are not highly regarded by the rest of society. But suddenly the glory of the Lord is shining around these shepherds, and of course they are afraid. But the angel said to them, you have nothing to be afraid of. I come to proclaim good news to you, tidings of great joy to be shared by the whole people. What? Good news? I thought the emperor was in charge of good news. I thought he's the one who rules the whole world. No, here's the angel talking to shepherds, and they're being told good news for everybody. Where's the emperor now? That's part of the point. And then, here, here's what the good news is. This day, in David's city, a Savior has been born to you, the Messiah and Lord. Caesar had two titles. One, he had more than two, but among the titles he had, one of them is Savior, Soter, and the other is Lord, Curios. No. Here's the Lord. Here's the Savior. And in the middle, the angel puts another title, Messiah or Christ, Israel's promise. So, Savior, Messiah, Lord. And then he says, let this be a sign for you. In a manger, you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. And we can wonder, now, why is that going to be a sign? And uh, we'll just pause there a minute and, and note manger. That implies that Mary and Joseph are, are like in a place where, where animals are kept. Uh, probably a cave, uh, because caves were used around, there are a lot of caves around Bethlehem, little, little caves, and uh, shepherds use them. They still do today in Bethlehem. Anyhow, so that's interesting that they're using the feeding trough. That's what a manger is. It's a feeding trough for animals. And they're, they're the, the child is lying there and wrapped in swaddling clothes. That was just one angel and the shepherds. But suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. That's a, like the sky is filled with angels now. These, I mean, these shepherds are having quite a night. And, and they're, they're, they're singing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. Uh, that's really, that's something great. And actually, that's the text that's read at Midnight Mass. But the, the text continues, and the church, you know, has different Masses and reads different texts at different Masses on Christmas Day. But I want to finish on with the text because no, no need to interrupt it. Uh, here's what happens after the angels are there. When the angels had returned to heaven, so the scene of the angels comes to an end, and there's the shepherds, just there, all alone. It's quiet again. And they just uh, say to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this event where the Lord, which the Lord has made known to us. And then they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Once they saw, they understood what had been told them concerning this child. Again, this is very beautiful. All the commotion's over again. It's very quiet. The shepherds go there. Nobody's saying anything. This is interesting. And they just see Mary and the child in a manger. Again, the manger theme is sounded a second time. And it says here, all who heard of it were astonished at the report given them by the shepherds. So the shepherds, the lowest members of the society, are the first to come forth with announcing the gospel. And then 
we have this beautiful line, Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. How quiet the scene is. Huh? How quiet the scene is of Christ, the, the Lord and Savior and Messiah coming into the world, just slips into the world. That's the point. This, this slipping of his quietly into the world. And dear friends, it's still how he comes. It's how he will come to you this Christmas. Be like the shepherds. Just go and look at the scene. Mary and the child lying in a manger. A feeding trough. Because this child is food for the whole world. He gives us himself, especially through the Eucharist, the bread of life, Bethlehem. It means house of bread. Oh man, the scriptures are full of all kinds of stuff. Stay in them in this Christmas season. Read them again and again. Each time you read the text, more will happen for you. The Lord will present himself quietly and slip into the world, giving us peace and hope in dark times. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light.